Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and one of the most common questions I get is what game measure can I use to develop in C++? Now I'm not telling you that you should develop in C++, but this is a question I get asked so often that I figured I'd do this video. Basically, we're going to look at game engines that can be scripted or programmed using the C++ or C programming language. So that means a modern game engine still under development. Uh, those are my two caveats. So a couple didn't make the list potentially because I can't tell if they're still under development. For example, uh, Gameplay 3D, Gamebryo, and the Hero Engine. I'm not 100% sure that all of those are still being maintained, so they didn't make the list. And there's a couple I put on this list, mostly because if I didn't, people were going to call me on it, even though I don't think they really fit. But that said, there are two dozen at least engines on this list, uh, coming from AAA style game engines to smaller hobbyist oriented open source projects. What fits per perfectly for you really is up to you. But without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at um, game engines that can be programmed using the C++ programming language. Again, that just means that they actually, the end user creates their game potentially or parts of their game using C++. So game engines such as Unity that is written using C++ aren't included in the list because unless you buy the pro version, you can't program in C++ at all. C Sharp is the primary programming mechanism there. All right, without further ado, let's jump in. Now, this entire list is available up on Game From Scratch, uh, and there will also be a learn more link next to it if I've already done a video profiling that particular game engine. Uh, also keep in mind, these are in no particular order, although I have uh, yeah, ruined a couple of them for you on this list. So without further ado, let's jump in. Now, first off, we have CryEngine. CryEngine, pretty predictable. Uh, they're moving more towards uh, Let's see, they're using their visual programming language and C Sharp as their scripting language, but right now you can still develop a full game using C++ in CryEngine. Now CryEngine is a AAA quality game engine. You probably know, don't know about it at this point in time. And if you know about CryEngine, you know about Lumberyard. Basically, uh, Amazon forked a license of CryEngine 3.4-ish, somewhere around there, three point something, and they've kind of gone on their own with it. Same kind of concept, completely free to use as long as you use Amazon's uh, networking stack. Uh, so if you host it in the cloud, you've got to use Amazon technologies to do so. Uh, but otherwise it is completely free. Again, AAA quality, it's being used for making some uh, Oh God, what the hell is it called? Star Citizen, for example. Um, so definitely a AAA style engine and definitely programmable using C++. But they've also got their own Lua interface as well, by the way. Uh, next up, we have obviously Unreal Engine. Probably the one that comes to mind. People say, what game engine can I use to write C++? Well, Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine has C++ scripting as a first class citizen. Um, it's actually got real time compiled or REPL style. So basically, uh, as you type the code, it's almost being treated like a scripting language. They've done a lot of work to basically make it so you don't have to do a compile to work with it. So it makes C++ work a lot like a scripting language. Of course, there's also their visual system called Blueprints and a couple of other ones available via plugin. But the primary programming interface for Unreal Engine is probably still C++ in this day and age. Uh, next up, we have Ogre. Now, Ogre comes with an asterisk behind it because Ogre technically is not a game engine. It's a game renderer. Um, it's got more than a renderer and less than an engine. So you're missing things like audio, um, physics, etc. Those are things you have to add yourself. Particularly, I don't think there's any input handling in there as well. So there's some pieces you're going to have to slot in from other sources to make this into a full-blown game engine. But it is entirely C++ based. has been used to make a number of commercial projects. So uh, Definitely do consider Ogre if C++ is your thing. Uh, next up, we have the G3D Innovation Engine. Now, this page does not sell it as well as it should. This is an engine that's been around for 15, 20 years. It's kind of a cross between a AAA game engine and an academic project. Um, so if you're looking to learn you know, rendering techniques, etc., you can use this engine. But if you're looking to create a game with AAA-style graphics effects, you could potentially use this engine as well. I somewhat recently checked this guy out. So if you are interested, do click that Learn More link and uh, check out G3D Innovation Engine in action. It's a very impressive engine. Next up we have Godot. Now the Godot game engine is on this list kind of. Uh, I got to be honest you don't really program your game using C++ with Godot. You can, you shouldn't, but you can. Now what you can do though is easily first off extend Godot, completely open source project. On top of that there's GD Native, a way of binding any kind of native code into it. And there's also a module system where you can basically create your entire game as modules that run inside of the Godot engine. So I've included it here. If you are a C++ developer, Godot is very friendly to you. 
But I don't think from a workflow perspective, you're going to want to do things entirely in C++. But I think that's true in a lot of cases, to be honest. So I threw Godot on this list. But the primary way you work with Godot is generally through GDScript and more commonly through C Sharp. But you can complete an entire game if you want using C++ and the Godot game engine. Just not sure I would. All right, next up, we have uh, Torque 3D. Now, Torque 3D, I actually thought was gone away, and it seems to have been back basically years ago. Um, I think it was Tribes. Um, Tribes was open source. They kind of spun off the engine. It used to be 99 bucks. Now it's completely free. This game engine has been around for a very long time. Uh, apparently it is still under active development and you use, they have their own scripting language, I think. I think they've binded to a third party scripting language as well, but you can also do your game fully completely in C++ using the Torque engine if you prefer. Next up, we have Banshee 3D. Banshee 3D is a uh, it's a maturing product. I've checked this out a couple times. Check the Learn More link if you want to see it in action. Just do be sure to build it from code yourself. The uh, binaries, at least the last time I checked, were quite out of date. But this is a C++ 14 code-based engine. You can develop completely in C++ 14, but they're also doing um, C-sharp style bindings for it as well. Now, um, there's also an underlying engine that Banshee has built on top of called the BS framework. Uh, that is the low level C++ library. So if you actually want to create your own game engine, you can actually use that underlying C++ code base to create your own, you know, editor and engine, this kind of stuff from it. So uh, Banshee Engine is definitely one of those wants to check out. It's a smaller project with a smaller community, uh, but it's also incredibly impressive. Now, next up we have, and I included this one just to be thorough, to be honest, because uh, I don't know, Valve seems to have kind of abandoned it. Uh, Source Engine and Source 2 Engine were both C++ scriptable. Um, you basically developed your game using C++. These are the underlying technology behind Half-Life 2, Dota 2, uh, and the likes. You can download the SDK for modifying games created with Source 1 and Source 2, but I don't know how you can actually license Source 2 anymore. There is off-rumored Source 3 in the works as well, uh, but then again, Half-Life 3 is also uh, rumored to be in the works. So I put this one on mostly just so people say, don't say, hey, what about Source? Because realistically, it's just not viable to create a game using Source in this day and age. I don't even think Valve licensed it anymore. Next up, we have Lyman Engine. I just covered this one a couple of days ago. 100% a hobbyist project. This is one of those things that if you just want to you know, roll your own or jump in and learn from, you might want to check out Lyman. Uh, it's pretty impressive for what it can do. It's got a built-in editor, a completely modern C++14 code base, um, cross-platform, definitely worth checking out if you're kind of more on the hobbyist side. Now, this isn't really a competitor to the likes of, say, Unreal or CryEngine, a completely different league. But if you're looking for more of a hobbyist take, Lyman Engine might be right for you. Next up, we have id Tech. Now, I also included this one mostly just to be complete, to be honest. This one kind of falls under the same category as Source, but not really. So ironically, actually, Source Engine was built on ID Tech, an early version. And ID Tech basically is the underlying technology used behind games like Doom and Quake. Every year... Um, John Carmack would roll his own new game engine and they would make an older version available for free. And then it was under split licensing. You can grab them under GPL license for basically making non-commercial open source games or you could buy a closed source license. Now, why I'm not necessarily including this in this list? Well, first off, since about ID Tech 4, they switched to the C++ programming language. Um, so ID Tech 4, 5, and 6 were all C++ based and you can download those, I think. I hope I'm not talking out my butt on 6. But for sure, 4 and 5 are downloadable and usable. And licensable. And commercial games, after the fact, are still being released using this technology. But... Uh, now that John Carmack is no longer at id Software, who knows what's going to happen with future iterations of id Tech. Uh, they are still working on it. Uh, Doom Eternal is being released under id Tech 7, but that was very much a John Carmack policy that was releasing the source code for each of these engines. So I don't know if you'll be able to license this stuff or if Bethesda Software is going to make id Tech available only in-house. So this one may fall off the list as time goes on. Okay, next up, we have Leadworks. 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 Yeah, Leadworks. Uh, this is one. It's up on Steam. They're just finishing a port. Leadworks 5, I think, is the newest version. 100% uh, C++ based. Uh, there is scripting available. So you got to have the professional edition in order to be able to work in C++. Otherwise, you are working in Lua. Uh, kind of falls in between a commercial engine and a hobbyist engine, somewhere along those lines. It's constantly for sale up on um, Steam. So wait for that new version to come out. And keep an eye on it, because th this is definitely 
I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see where Leadworks 5 actually goes, or Leadworks 5. Um, but this one is constantly for sale up on Steam. Now, next up, we have Erlicht, or IR Lick. Um, I believe Licht is light in German, but I might be making that up. Uh, this is actually the same guy as uh, Copper Cube. Uh, he's actually made a number of different game engines. IR Licht is an open source C++ powered game engine. It's inspired by Ogre. It's got a large active community. Uh, so if you are looking for an open source C++ based game uh, engine, 3D game engine, uh, IR Licht definitely is worth checking out. Next up, we have Urho 3D. Now, Urho 3D has been quietly being developed in the background for ages and ages and ages, and there was actually a spin-off engine that is not immediately coming to me. Oh, God, what the hell is it called? Nah, it doesn't really matter because that project's defunct now anyways, which is unfortunate because it looked really cool. But Urho 3D is an open source project. You can also script in, um, let's see, they used AngelScript, I think it was, and potentially Lua now? Or maybe C Sharp now. Oh, you definitely can do a C Sharp now because they've actually got Urho Sharp, which is a C Sharp port of the Urho 3D game engine that's being maintained by Xamarin and the people that actually wrote Mono. So um, it's again cross platform, open source, full feature 3D game engine. It's got its own editor. The editor's a little bit ugly, but definitely fully capable. Uh, so if you're looking for something along the lines of an open source engine or project to work with, Urho 3D might be one worth checking out. I also did a feature of this one in part of my. Um, the others theory. So if you're interested in learning more about Urho 3D, do click that learn more link. Next up, we have Toy Engine. Toy Engine is a whole lot like Lyman Engine. Uh, it's a hobbyist C++ project that has been open sourced. In this particular case, he's basically trying to be patron backed. Uh, it's got a full editor, definitely uh, immature at this point. It, it needs more development. It is not production ready, but it is completely open source and C++ based if that's your thing. Um, I also recently did a video on this one if you're interested to Again, click that learn more link. And we have Panda 3D. Now this one you might think, hey, wait a minute, isn't that a Python engine? Well, yeah and no. It's entirely C++ scriptable or Python scriptable. And I think in some cases they've actually got examples for both. Open source project, a very cool engine. It's been around forever. It actually used to be a commercial engine at Disney for making MMORPGs, including one called Toontown, which apparently a lot of people have nostalgic feelings for. I've personally never played it, never heard of it before I found this engine. But this is definitely a production tested engine and there is a um, PBR based renderer option out there that makes it look very, very good. If you're also interested in this one, I featured this in the others as well. Click that learn more button and watch the video on Panda 3D. So again, looks like a Python engine, but it's also fully C++. And then we have Ascenthal, I think. Uh, I checked this one out quite a while ago. This one, again, is a commercial engine available up on Steam. I did a video about it, and I've promptly forgotten everything else about it since. Uh, been in development a long time. Really, really, really good quality graphics. Uh, C++ is the programming language. It's up on Steam, and it's on sale all the time. There's a free version to check out as well. And um, at one point in time, I, I did, and I remembered what the engine did, and clicked the Learn More and find out what I don't remember now. Uh, next up, we got Tombstone Engine. I actually have no experience with Tombstone Engine, but I do have a lot of experience with its predecessor, which is the C4 Engine. The C4 Engine was one of those first um, affordable commercial game engines for indie developers, and Tombstone kind of continues that whole idea on. It's Professional Development 204, PlayStation 4, Windows, Mac, and Linux, and C++-based... And I think that's where I leave you, because I actually I don't know much more about this engine, which... You know what? I, I do need to uh, check this guy out in more detail. So do keep an eye out. I'll probably do something on the Tombstone engine uh, at some point in the future. I don't personally know a whole lot more, but I do know it is the successor to the C4 engine, which you may or may not have heard of. Next up, we have the Fire Engine, which has by far and away the coolest name of any game engine out there, bar none. Which is funny, because I don't traditionally think of Sony as having the greatest sense of humor. Uh, but that's exactly what this is. This is a Sony R&D game engine. It started off for the PlayStation Two, I think. Um, and it was back then when they made basically a processor chip that nobody knew how to use, the cell processor. So that might be PS3. I don't know. One of those two, when they switched their architecture completely, uh, they needed to roll their own game engine to actually show people how to go ahead and use it. Now, the funny thing is they made this game engine available for everyone else to use. Regardless of what platform you work on, it is completely freely available C++ game engine, and it was worked on by the developers for behind Naughty Dog to actually extend upon it. But it now supports um, PlayStation VR applications, and you think, okay, well, I don't need a PlayStation engine. Well, look at this one. PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita, Windows, uh, Google 
Google Android and Apple iOS. And that is kind of misleading because there's also games that were created using the Fire Engine were also ported to Xbox, Xbox One, and well as the Nintendo Switch. So this little Sony powered engine has powered over 200 game titles. And we're talking a lot of titles, things you've definitely heard of, Unravel, um, Rabbids. So this one is on, oh no, that's not Rabbids, that's a different game, it just looks like Rabbids. Uh, Unravel, Sweet Poncho, uh, Oli Oli 2, uh, Hotline Miami, a, a whole lot of games you've heard of, Flow, uh, they go on and on. There's actually some pretty high quality, um, almost AAA style games that have actually been used using the Fire Engine. So it's kind of one of those shocking technologies that a lot of people haven't actually heard of, which is funny because it's been around for 15 years. It's completely free to use. It's totally cross-platform. It is production proven and so on. So uh, Fire Engine is definitely one to check out. One of those ones I should feature on this channel sometime. I actually think I didn't though because of NDA limitations. So I'm not 100% certain on that one. I'll check it out again, maybe do some future uh, fire engine content. This was definitely going to be part of my other series, uh, but I discontinued that one. And next up we have Unigine 2. Now this one you know probably from the um, uh, band, uh, not bandwidth, uh, benchmarking software, Unigine. Uh, it's one of the most popular used 3D benchmarks for, you know, tech TV shows, things like uh, oh god, none of them are coming to mind, but you know, Tech Crunch, no, not Tech Crunch, uh, Tom's Hardware, etc. They would often benchmark using the Unigine engine. Well, it's actually a game engine, sort of. It's not really aimed at games. Um, Unigine definitely is straight out of the benchmarking software, but they have a full SDK. Uh, the problem is it, it's kind of got a weird pricing structure, uh, in that it costs, I think, about a thousand bucks to get into it. Oh, way more. Uh, so 1500 through uh, 10 grand through quotas. And it's aimed more at that whole engineering and sim market. But for gamers here, you can see it. Now, I have heard from a little birdie, however, that there is thoughts or works towards creating an indie version of the Unigine game engine. Um, so it could be interesting to see exactly where that goes. It's been used to make a couple of games, um, but it's a kind of a relatively unknown outside of the benchmarking software. It's very, very pretty. Unfortunately, they don't have a demo or a time limited version or anything like that, that I could get my hands on. And when I actually applied for the, the try thing, it, they didn't get back to me. So I've not no, I have no personal hands on experiences with the Unigine engine, but I threw it in here for completeness. Uh, next up we have Shiva. Now Shiva is only available in C++ if you get one of the pro-ish versions. And in that case, it's still a lot like like um, uh, Godot in that, you know, you're mostly creating modules to extend the Shiva engine as opposed to Shiva itself. This is the strangest engine. It's been quite this quiet, this private beta forever. And it looks so cool, but it's just not accessible to me. So I have no idea if it's any good. But if you get the good version or the premium version or the pro version or whatever we're going to call it, you do get C++ uh, plugin support available to extend the engine, but you need to use Shiva Advanced Edition. So that part's kind of unfortunate. Otherwise, you are using Lua for your game development. Now, again, this game engine has been here and in development and new versions released all the time, but it's in this closed private beta thing. So got no idea what this engine's actually like to use. There is a trial, I think but it was really outdated. Okay, so there is an updated version of it. So maybe I will check this one out for the channel sometime in the future. And that is it. That is our list. Now, once again, the entire list is available right here. Now, no doubt I have missed things off of this list. You know, um, I don't know all of them. And when I was going through the engine, I may have forgotten some. There are a few, again, I didn't include, such as Gameplay 3D, because I can't tell if it's still under development. Apparently, there is a Gameplay 4 out there. And I'd love to see it, because I loved Gameplay 3D, but it hadn't it hasn't seen a GitHub commit in like three or four years. So it's kind of feeling dead to me. Uh, ditto for um, Net Engine, Net Immerse Engine, or Game Bureau, or whatever it's called these days. Basically, the engine that previously used to power, or still does actually, apparently in a modified form, the uh, Elder Scrolls games was written using Gamebrio, as were tons of other pieces of software, but uh, it was bought out, and then in a strange kind of uh, 
I don't know. I don't know if you can license it. You'll go to the webpage, try to figure out if it's being developed, and you can get back to me because it's very confusing. Otherwise, I would have thrown it on the list. But they also never really made it available to people. So um, you could only really trial it. So I didn't include it. I didn't include older engines that are no longer developed, like Lyft Tech, etc. But if I did miss something that is still actively being developed, C++ is one of the possible scripting languages. I would love to hear about it in the comments down below, either on Game From Scratch or here on YouTube. And hopefully that list was useful. So if you are a C++ developer looking for a game engine to work with, I just gave you a whole bunch of options. Now, if you are kind of just still overwhelmed with what to check out here, let me narrow it down a little bit for you. If you're looking to create a commercial game using C++, Unreal Engine is probably your best bet. Uh, if you're looking for a research product, G3D is hard to beat. I think everybody, if you have not checked out G3D, even just for giggles, go check that one out. It's definitely worth seeing. Um, things like the Banshee engine, the Lyman engine, the Toy engine, those are all very, very interesting and entirely um you know, they're hobby based, but the source code is completely out there and uh, approachable. So if that's the kind of area you're aiming for, do definitely check those out. I'm a big fan of the Panda 3D engine, although I would probably be a Python programmer to use it. Um, it it's getting a little older, but it's still very actively underdeveloped. And uh, the, the Fire engine is still like the coolest thing ever. I'm going to check out to see if I can actually do videos on it. If so, I will actually do some content on the Fire engine. It's weird because if you Google on Fire engine or go to YouTube on Fire engine, you will find almost nothing. And I think part of that is down to the NDA, which is weird because this engine has been used to make so many products. Um, so those are the ones I would definitely recommend checking out of this list. Now, of course, the Godot engine, um, if you are looking to do primarily... Um, using another language, but extensibility using C++, this is probably one of the easiest. So of the engines where extending it using C++, Godot is definitely one to check out. If the if you're actually looking to create your entire game using Godot and C++, I don't know what the hell you're doing. I highly recommend against it, but you can, so I'm including it. But it is very, very, very easy to extend Godot, especially with their new GD native link area. So if you're looking to primarily develop using a more productive or higher level language, but you want to have that you know, high level of extensibility without necessarily jumping into or recompiling it, uh, the Godot engine is definitely one to check out between the module support and the GD native bindings for binding in C++ and other native code groups into it. So yeah, those would be my recommendations. And if you're looking for AAA and Unreal Engine just didn't do it for you, definitely check out CryEngine. Now CryEngine is moving more towards C Sharp. And I think you're going to start to see a lot of their documentation move away from C++ and towards uh, C Sharp or Semantic that are built in um, the visual programming language. So it'd be interesting to see where this one goes. And if neither of those work for you on a AAA level, then check out Lumberyard. I don't know, there's just something with the way Lumberyard is developing that I'm just not that excited by. It's the lack of documentation or interest. But I think it's also not really aimed at the indie hobbyist. I think it's aimed more at the AAA style studios. And that's why it's just kind of a little bit less interesting to me overall. So those are about two dozen C++ game engines. Hope you found something in there of interest, something new to you. If, again, if I missed something, please do let me know in the comments down below. If you're currently working with one of these engines or you worked with one of these engines in the past and you recommend people stay the hell away from it or you highly recommend it, also let me know that in the comments down below. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.